Uh, well, there might have been a bit of that, I guess. Um, they ultimately they had the police set fire to the to the uh, to the hotel and Mrs. Jones Inn, where they were holed up. Um, it's thought that uh, Kelly was the only one. Uh, I don't know how you put it, uh, brave enough or stupid enough to actually come out and and uh, fire on the police. But he had his armour on, you see, and this is this is given rise to the great to the great myth of the well, it's not a myth. I mean, he actually did this. But it must have been an enormous effort to do it because the, the armour is is extremely heavy. Um, uh, and as uh, Kelly came out, he was he was shot in the leg. He was brought down. He was captured. The other one of them, I can't remember which one it was. One of them seemed to have been killed by by gunfire inside, and the other two uh, had been suggested by the way that they were found uh, had probably uh, both uh, committed suicide rather than be caught. But you know, I, I say that. But there are stories of one of them getting away and running off to Queensland and living to be an old man, you know, the stories are never ending. The three yeah. master roles, which when I came across them for the first time, they're on display down there. I just found it incredibly potent because people, you know, this, and I'll talk to you after this, it's Kelly, um, this sort of almost hero worshipping of him. But when you see the priest master role and it's all of the list of the police for those days who are going out to work and it all has some legends coming back except for the three. And indeed, and indeed, Kelly um, terrorised the Northeast, you know, brought up the family, you know, be careful because he, he did capture people and hold people to ransom and all sorts of things. So it was yeah. But at the same time, it has to be said that he had a lot of local support mm. and, the, and, the, and the police had, in fact, one of the most, I think, most interesting uh, items or collection, little collections within the police department's archives is a, a collection of, I think there's about 16 small photographs, what are referred to as um, carte de visite, little photographs of people this sort of this big on, stuck onto a card. And these 16 are all men who were known as Kelly sympathisers. So these people, you know, they were watched by the police. They were known associates of, of Kelly either through family or, or family connections. Mm. We will be putting online, not we, but the public record of it will be um, in the next few months, um, a series of letters that were written by constituents like yourself saying, I want to join the police force and capture Kelly. I'm experienced, um, you know, in disguising and I can mm. pick up and break the saloon and I have done it and, you know, we could look down, see them in the bush and shoot them all, you know, they had these fabulous ideas. So they're really interesting. Well, the end of September, September 26th or 7th, something like that, 1878 to July, the end of July, 1880. Nearly two years. Yeah. It's a long time on the run. Mm. Any other questions? Oh, I'll just you know, I'll, <laughs> well, I, I, I'm happy to talk about this. Um, when, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go one step back, this may not seem connected, but uh, in um, Diane's uh, introduction uh, today, which you made reference to the fact that, uh, that she, her office was in a cell. My office was actually in the same complex, but it was in the police garage, um, when the police garage, when the police operated a garage opposite, it's, ne it's next to, it was next to the old Melbourne jail. Um, now, that, that space that was the police garage up until the 1920s uh, or even earlier than that was in fact the yard um, that enclosed the, the police, uh, sorry, the uh, Old Melbourne Jail Hospital. When the, 
when people were, when men, uh, I'm not sure about the women, but when men were executed, they were buried outside the wall of that yard. So Kelly and a number of other people were buried in what became the, well, it was literally outside, and it was in the area that became uh, part of RMIT, originally the Working Men's College. When the engineering school was being built in, 19, in the, about 1928, something like that, uh, those bodies were excavated, ex exhumed, and uh, buried elsewhere. Um, and most, I think they all went out to Pentridge. Uh, and that, so that's what happened to uh, Ned's body. Uh, there are all kinds of stories relating to removal of his head. There was supposed to be a man, the man out in, in the wheat fields out in Western Australia apparently actually had Ned's skull, which is thought to have gone missing. A, um, a plaster cast was done of the, uh, of the skull, which uh, is on exhibit in, in the old Melbourne jail. Uh, so yes, there's a lot of uh, doing do. Uh, entered into this whole thing. Um, and, and of course, uh, jails go out of, uh, out of business in a sense, and just as the old Melbourne jail, or what was originally the, the Melbourne jail, uh, became the old Melbourne jail because Pentridge was created, uh, Pentridge itself, of course, now has ceased, has ceased long since to be a jail, and so the, the, the bodies that were buried there of executed felons and those executed somewhere else and subsequently brought there have had to be uh, re-exhumed. Um, so there is no rest for the wicked. I uh, interviewed the uh, descendant, the son of the excavator and um, he maintained that his father said that there's a large number of bones in the Footscray dump <laughs> Any other questions? All right, I'm pleased. Thank you. Thank you.